Oddly enough, I knew about Digital Circus before the pilot was released. I could have sworn I'd seen art of it prior to the pilot, but I know for sure I had at least seen the promotional shorts for the character introductions. The first one I saw was Ragatha, and my first thought was, good lord, that is an ugly character design. And she looked so much like Raggedy Ann that I thought it was just some random project I would never see again. I was wrong. And I remember being put off more about it just because Ragatha was hit by a butcher knife and then she pulls it out of her face, gives a little quirky haha laugh, and that's it. it. Something about that clip just really annoyed me more than anything because it gave me this serious, cute, quirky vibes and that really turns me off to any show, movie, character, anything. That's not to say I feel that way now, but that short was enough for me to remember the name, character, and upcoming show that I didn't care for until my dad and brother called me and told me to go check it out because it apparently was really good. So I listened, and I watched the pilot. In all honesty, I was pleasantly surprised. I laughed, remembered the characters, and overall just enjoyed the pilot. My favorite character is definitely Kane. He's very entertaining, and Kinger is great too. I just realized I may have referenced the theme song just then. Um, I explained this to a few friends in my art discord, which if you are an aspiring art YouTuber, hit me up and I'll get you added to this group. Um, but basically, I explained that I didn't like Pomni, and that's freaky because I love clowns and jesters, but the difference here is that Pomni is just a regular chick with a slap of jester paint on her. She was pulled into a self-aware digital world and forced into this jester persona, so naturally her character is a fish-out-of-water type. And I'm not saying you can't have that kind of character, but the whole time I could not stop thinking of Twilight from Equestria Girls whenever Pomni spoke or was even on screen. Maybe it was her dialogue, but something about the way she acted and it's just the, her dictation just bothered me. And Y'all are gonna hate me for this, but I felt the same with Jax, and quite honestly, I found him annoying at times. And yeah, I know that's his character, and I don't even enjoy the act that he puts up, though. It, it gives me the idea that he fakes it, and maybe that's what his character does. He, he fakes this persona as some sort of coping mechanism with the crisis he's going through. But... Regardless, it's the same situation with Pomni, where it was just the delivery of some lines. Like, yes, the two characters had wonderful voice acting and delivery, but the way it was executed just sounded weird, and dare I say annoying at times. But the characters were still lovable, and I found the two to be cute in their own right. And one example of a clown-like character that is just a clown the whole time and not treating the act as a persona is Fizzaroli from Hell of a Boss. He holds the voice and energy literally all the time, but that's because he's an actual clown, and he becomes that and turns clown into a personality, whereas Pomni is just literally a normal person playing an unfamiliar role. So she doesn't really count as a clown or a jester, or whatever she is. Not yet, anyways. Back to Ragatha, though, I know she was most likely inspired by Raggedy Ann, as Jax's voice was allegedly inspired by Raggedy Andy, and from the musical movie with the two characters that I can't remember the name of right now. Uh, but Raggedy Ann feels more ragdoll-like than Ragatha, and maybe that's a 2D versus 3D animation situation, but Ragatha has an odd stiffness about her that gave Kane and Gangle more fluid movements in comparison to her own. I feel like Ragatha should feel more limp in a sense, and she does have that already, but she still feels like she has bones, and that bothers me. Her run cycle definitely feels very doll-like, and her being thrown around by the abstracted Kofmo also gives a ragdoll vibe, but otherwise she feels more like a human in a costume. Which technically isn't that what they all are, other than the AIs and part of the people part of the worlds, of course. Before I get into what I enjoyed about this pilot and my expectations for the future, let me make one more comment. I think there is direct inspiration here. Poppy, Pomni, sad, scared, masked character in both series, charismatic leader type, and an overall dark comic sense throughout the series. One of the main characters is purple, which is kind of a dumb point, but I'm putting it out there anyway. And as it turns out, I was right, as Gooseworks told us that this pilot was in fact inspired by Poppy the Performer, where Jax was inspired by Poppy, and I know Keito Mono inspired Gangle's mask gimmick. The second I saw that mask fall off of Gangle, I knew immediately there was a reference to Kimono, and I am not the only one who noticed it. But it makes me really happy to know that Poppy is still an inspiration piece for this project and gives me hope for it moving forwards. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video and talk about the amazingness of the amazing Digital Circus. 
To start, I love the intro. I played lots of Flash games, online computer games, DS games, Minecraft, Animal Crossing, all that stuff that gives the nostalgia bug a little tickle. So this intro brought me back to that in a matter of seconds. And even the way the characters are animated to move and even the glitchiness reminds me so much of those old games I loved as a kid. And to be honest, I have seen a hefty amount of criticism of this pilot from people who A, think the series is a horror series, and B, did not grow up with that set of nostalgia. And if you don't, you don't have to have grown up with the, that nostalgia to feel the nostalgia. I didn't grow up in the 80s, but I get 80s nostalgia. And that could be because I was raised on 80s cartoons, toys, lifestyle, and whatever, but I was born in 05. But this show not only opens the visual and the sound effects that replicate the idea of opening up a game on your DS, but the character designs and set of set design all fall into the category of liminal and fun. This is a circus, and it feels that way. But there's also a mess of rooms and designs that make it feel familiar yet strange, and it has the perfect balance of saturated colors and darkness that you would probably see in the back of a bouncy house party venue. And now that I'm thinking about it, the whole digital circus kind of reminds me of that old game Purple Place. Did anyone else play that or am I just crazy? <laughs> also, I love that Kane is an AI that feels perfectly real. Obviously, he's scripted to sound that way, but in the reality of the sense, he's an AI. And he feels so realistic. I feel like the whole time, he's just a very extroverted camp counselor and it fits his character perfectly. Another part of what I love about this pilot is the comedy. I've seen a lot of critics, so to speak, complaining about the pilot having lame or just bad comedy, but I personally disagree. It's not a laugh out loud, the whole squad is laughing kind of comedy, but it's funny in its own regard. I think Jax's jokes are dumb, but most of the cuts from Kinger, visual jokes, and virtually anything Kane says is funny to me. I think I jab at Jax a lot, but I can't help it. His character is written so forced, but it, it fits the personality he has. He reminds me of the kid that thinks he's an outcast class clown, but in reality everyone just finds him annoying and that's why he's outcast. No one actually laughs at his jokes, they just laugh to get him to stop talking. And that's not to say I don't like Jax, yeah I know I just reamed on this dude for pretty much the entirety of this video, but I still think he's an enjoyable character. I just put him at a low ranking in terms of my favorite characters in the series. Also, there apparently was the thing where people were complaining about Jax being a poor attempt at being a Tumblr sexy man, but I don't get that vibe. Maybe from his personality, but visually I don't get it. And Kane is literally right here. I don't understand. So the visuals are great. The vibe is great. The characters are great. And the comedy is subjectively great. What else is there to go over? Well, I guess we should talk about a minor controversial topic regarding the pilot, since it's clear most of the people reviewing this pilot don't have brain cells. This is not a horror series. Nowhere, ever, does this thing ever paint itself to be a horror series. While the description says Pomni discovers that there is something very wrong, that does not mean it has to be horror. It could allude to drama, thriller, slice of life, literally anything. And it actually makes me physically coil up when people cannot get that through their heads. Like, it is not really that hard to look at things from another angle. Now I know the series has moments where it's like, ooh, spooky, but anything uncomfortable and unfamiliar feels unsettling and that's the point. There are questions being raised by the reveals and things Pomni finds on the digital circus, but that's why the pilot does it. It shows the viewer the teaser of the things to come in the future. You ask questions because you're interested in the content provided to you, and that continues the series. Have you ever read a prologue or watched a movie trailer? That's the idea of a pilot. And just because the pilot shows a Stanley Parable inspired sequence does not automatically make it a horror series, and the same goes for Cosmo abstracting and the other abstractions. It's just showing that bad things happen in this world. It doesn't mean it is automatically horror. The whole idea of this pilot was to show the beginning of Pomni losing her sanity. That doesn't make it horror. That can fall literally into any category, even comedy if you wanted, because the spiral into this insanity does not exclusively belong to horror. Take for example, Cicero from Skyrim. That is a fantasy adventure, open world RPG, I guess, and he went insane from a drama and thriller type scenario. So does that make Skyrim a horror game? No, and if you think so, then no. Get, go, go read a book. So I don't think it's necessary to call Digital Circus a masterpiece, because to me, it has plenty of flaws, but that's literally any project. Don't get me wrong, I love this pilot and I know I will love the whole series, I would just like to see some things get tweaked for the better in the series, in my opinion. I mean, 
obviously I liked it because one, Kane is on my crush list. Two, I'm literally doing fan art on screen. And three, I made this video. I want to give some helpful critiques, but I feel like I don't know enough to really give that sort of information. So all I'll say is I love the pilot and everything it has to offer. The characters are great. I absolutely love the entire vibe of this backwoods DS game aesthetic and anything with clowns will get me my attention. So I'll be watching the rest of this series when it comes out regardless. If anything, I think maybe just some lighting adjustments could be in order. Sometimes Ragatha looks oddly bright because she's the only character with a human skin tone and it does really clash hard with the surroundings and supporting characters, but that could just be me and my light sensitivity. With all that being said, the pilot is amazing and I'm so excited to see what comes of it in the future and I am just praying that TikTok kids and Twitter users don't ruin this fantastic indie piece. Remember, you can separate art from the artist and more importantly, art from the fan base. This is coming from a FNAF fan. Trust me, I'm an internet veteran. I have witnessed the unimaginable. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video and sticking around until the end. Remember to check out my socials linked in the description and be sure to look at my Etsy shop where I will be releasing new sticker designs that may or may not include the art you watched me make for this video. I also have a Patreon that you should go check out with plenty of perks and benefits for reasonable prices. So once again, thank you all so much for sticking around and I'll chat with you all later. Thank you.